Things are getting out of control. I haven't gotten anything done this week. Nothing in relation to the channel that is. I don't even have a video for today, hence why I'm just walking around with the camera showing y'all the stuff. A model, things are really kicking into gear here. Have this, this is fun. You know what this is? Probably not, because you couldn't even see it. This, it's upside down. Can you read that? It says Hanush Jewelers. It's a big, like, wall cabinet thing from a jewelry store that went out of business. Been trying to do things through liquidation to reuse and, you know, not be wasteful. So that's in the house now. It's going to cover most of this wall over here. That part goes up to the ceiling. There are some columns that go next to it. Obviously, this part's going to be fixed up. It's a cherry mahogany, well, it's mahogany, I don't know, the contractor explained it to me. It'll look good. This part, the bowed part, goes up there and there are these big columns with sconces on it. And then there's this part right here, which you can't really see, but it's a cabinet with drawers in it. Gonna do something different with the top there and get it fixed up. It's gonna look so nice. In order for that to get put in here, I had to gut what was in this room and move it into that room and then found out that that room, the painting was starting on it today. So then I had to spend a good chunk of the day gutting this room and there's nowhere to put anything because I had moved everything from this room into this room already to make room for that thing. I already told you about that. So I did, there's just, if there's stuff, everything is a mess. That's part of it, just a few weeks more of chaos and then things will be done. New color, old color, new color. Think I like it, wood pops very nicely with it. On tractor, artist, he's out on lunch. That's why I was able to pick up the camera because there's somebody working inside so can't really film inside. I mean, I could, but it's awkward. And then outside, the neighbors have construction going on. That's nothing new. That's been going on all summer long. Even though now it's fall. Very loud, just kind of getting used to it. We got two planes, fighter jets. I don't think you'll be able to see them. See them, two little dots? That's fun. What to look at, does anything seem different out here? Background noise wise? You don't hear the pleasant sound of the water, maybe? It's so nice, there's finally clouds in the sky. Yeah, very quiet and serene. It's weird, don't hear the sounds of water. There's a reason for that, you wanna see why? Yep, yep, mm-hmm. Yeah, the pool done broke. <laughs> These things happen. Uh, there's a leak in the liner, so I had to drain it down. It, the liner needed to be replaced anyway, so it was very old and fragile, and you can see the why there'll be a lot more on this in this weekend's vlogs i already started filming that a few days ago it's mostly just me sitting in here playing with turbo as the water was draining down he had a great time with it the lights are busted so they're trying to get those fixed there's water down leaking inside i will talk about all that in the vlog for now it's just here's this is what's going on oh, construction crew construction crew construction Gr contractor just there's people working everywhere so I haven't been able to get anything done for the channel. One, because I'm getting the things done inside the house that I just explained. You know, it's one thing that I don't like filming when there are people running around up there. It's a whole different thing when there have been people running around out here. Everyone's way on lunch, the so things are quiet. Thought I'd pick up the camera and just show you some new plants. Now that we're probably a good five minutes into the video, it's a rambling vlog. Don't know what to tell you at this lens. I'm still not used to this lens. Need to move this, been mixing up the neems, doing the sprays on a consistent basis, trying to get the plants ready to go inside. Now we're just getting a little chunk of an on the fly video today. Picked up the camera and said, okay, finally some quiet, some privacy. And I have a few new plants to talk about. Over the weekend, I took my little sister out to a new nursery. It's a new nursery to me. Haven't been there before, but I've wanted to go for a long time. They're a little out of the way. They're in Defiance, Missouri. So they're not in St. Louis, they're about I don't know, 27, 30 minutes, I think is what the GPS said. From where I live, it's a beautiful drive, very windy, and lots of gorgeous roads, and there's a little scenic view. Go out and look at the river if you wanted to. It was a fun nursery. I don't have much footage from there, but I just have to take my word for it. It's called Priscilla's Nursery, and they had a great selection of houseplants, and I got some more things that I really shouldn't have gotten because they're plants that I just, I tend to kill. They don't do great with me. Elasticas. I picked up a couple of these in a different video where I was at a place called Eckert's. Pull the Moonlights, the variegated ones. This one is a ruby. I was drawn to it, but it's because of that trunk. Look at that cute little chunky trunk this thing has. I don't see this as a practical way to want to have the plant started. 
typically, I bought this little wooden base to keep the plants on it and I'm not even using it. There we go. I should talk about which one it is. It's a ruby. See that ficus ruby? Having one standardized at this size seems um, stupid. It, it's just silly because these are plants that get huge. They're trees. This is literally when you grow these where they can grow all year round outside, it's a tree. So to have them standardized and chopped at about a foot, I would say that's about how high that is, just seems like a terrible idea. So of course, had to get it. It's going to require a lot of maintaining with this amount of trunk on it. Ultimately, at some point with the pruning, someday this will start to put up some growth from down below, from down lower and then I'll end up getting a plant that's more desirable. If I were to try and maintain this as a standard, then what's going to end up happening with it is a, a lot of pruning, probably every couple of months to maintain that shape. You'll end up having a very nice, thick, girthy trunk on there, which will look awesome, but never going to have that nice full floor plant that I like to see with an elastica, but I still thought like, this is cool. It's a different approach and I really like thick, chunky, little trunks on plants, so why not give it a shot? And I won't kill it, here's why. I, I know better and I'm gonna do better. That's it, that's all there is to it. I've always known better and what to do with them. I know how to grow these plants. It's just protecting them from myself and my urge to water them. The less water, the better with these guys. I'm a heavy handed water, so I just need to just don't overwater them. It's pretty simple. I have a tanniki in the garage that I've had for like four or five years. And the key to success with that one for me has been to just leave it alone. It's a plant that I just don't mess with it and it's doing great. Okay, and then the next one, I think y'all saw a glimpse of this when I was walking around rambling with the camera. This is, it's another Tanniki. It's a great big one though, look at that. I pull the camera back and then I zoom right in, that made no sense. Gorgeous foliage on the Tanniki. I'll come up higher so you can get a better look at it. It's more of a cream and a green. There's no red except for in the middle vein on the foliage and then of course the new growth that's coming out has a hint of red in it. This one, great floor plant. I probably should have prefaced all this with why I've been gathering more elasticos, more rubber trees, more rubber plants because I'm going to want some more colorful house plants around the house, not plants for the growth space or even for the backyard. I want some that I can throw into baskets and will grow up and look really nice because of the darker tones that the house has now, that's why. There's always a reason for things. I don't always point it out because that seems stupid and not very organic, but I started with indoors so you could see the walls and see what's happening with the floors and everything. So that I can make my point of, I want some light colored plants that will do well and contrast nicely with the darker tones that are going in there just to have a more fresh, lighter appeal with everything. Plants that I think will stand out nicely against the darker tones. Help bring a little bit more freshness to what could end up looking potentially, not dingy, but, well, yeah, maybe dingy. Might be a little bit dingy with things being that dark. I don't think they will be, but it's just such a drastic change from what I'm used to. So a nice big tanniki. It's about two and a half feet tall, I would say, something like that. The front rooms in the house get a lot of very bright light where I think elasticos will do well. That one's going to have to go tabletop. The, it, the little one may, possibly end up being a growth space plant when I think about it, just because I don't think it'll make a great floor plant because of the way it's been standardized. That was just kind of an impulse buy because it was so stinking cute. The Tanniki though, I think get this into a nice basket and in front of one of those windows that has the Southern exposure, I'll probably have it set back a little bit from those windows, throw a little water in there about every, I don't know, 10 to 14 days at the max during the winter time. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Essentially once a month. I don't water the elasticas very often. Less is more with the figs, right? So they should do better if I just leave them alone. Just have to remind myself to not fuss with it. Make sure they get plenty of light and should be good. If all else fails and they don't like it in the house, let's pop it out into the growth space. Plenty of warmth and humidity out there for them. And they're excellent fun plants to have around. So that's the story behind those two. I love the Tanniki, I love the Ruby, and I love the other, the, where I can show them to you, they're right next to me. Shiverianas, the Moonshines, camera doesn't wanna. It's not gonna pick up on that. New lens will be back in a couple of weeks. A different form of variegation with an Elastica. These are thirsty. I've had to cut off the water out here because the water was draining into those light fixtures, so I haven't been able to water the plants the last few days. We're supposed to be getting some rain tonight, so that should be good for everyone. You ready for this one? Look at it, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? 
It's a Spiralis, one of the serious Spiralis. Pretty easy to grow cactus that I've wanted for a long time, but I only ever see them for sale as cuttings and they typically are very expensive about the cost of this one. And uh, I figured, well, I'm seeing this in person. It's not a perfect spiral. It's really hard to find them as a perfect spiral when you do and be paying a lot of money for them, but it's just a fun looking cactus. Even if the spiral on it is inconsistent and wonky, just a fun cactus. Have very fun, neat shape to them. You grow them like a lot of the other Sears, Sears Pruvianus, one of the more common ones. That's the apple cactus, the apple blossom cactus. Light, light, well-drained soil. In the winter time, I would not be giving these very much water at all. Uh, probably just an occasional watering not necessarily even enough to soak through the bottom of the container and that is all dependent on the humidity and vpd which i've talked about in other videos i'm not going to go into all that in this one because that's just it's not necessary but shorter day lengths less growth won't need much care so hopefully we'll get some good growth on it next year if it's evenly lit from all different directions it should be looking good should keep doing its thing and spinning and twisting its way up this one is thirsty I do need to give it a water. It has been unseasonably warm here. Been in the 80s and low 90s the last few days. I think they would appreciate a drink. In fact, we have some overcast. I might just leave these out here on the table and let them get some water this evening. That's it for the new plants. Starting to gather up the things for having actual house plants. I grow a lot of house plants, but you know, I keep them in my grow space. That's not the same as having them around the house. It's gonna be several weeks until the construction inside is done, all the remodeling and everything, but I'm happy to have a move on things for some nice looking house shrubs and house trees, really. These things get freaking huge. And perfect timing, the second I finished up the track, it's not a tractor, skid steer up the hill, got fired up, about to get noisy again. Sorry for the shorter video, for the chaotic video, it's just what's going on right now. If you didn't like it, you probably won't like the vlog this weekend because there's gonna be a whole lot more of that. Hopefully this will be done by the weekend. It was supposed to be done last week, but you know, you know how construction stuff goes, right? There's comment down below. Say hi, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Hey, Turbs. Can't wait till the lens comes back from the doctor so I can actually get good shots of the dog again. It's really hard to get their facial expressions to show through without a lot of light. I'm supposed to be going. But yeah, comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens, getting ready for fall. Like I said, been doing all the neems and soaks and all that fun stuff. Plants will be coming inside in just a few weeks. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.